the commandments and the judgments of the Torah, the instructions of Yahweh Elohim are. As you said earlier, that is a sanctification process. So there is justification and there is sanctification. Many people think, because they're taught wrongly and correctly and falsely, that all I have to do is say a prayer, repeat after some preacher, and now they're saved. Yeah. No. Now, the example of the thief on the cross. In Hebrew thought, we don't take the exception to make the, the rule. That was the grace and mercy. Yahweh knows his heart. Had he been given a chance, if he wasn't on the cross, Yahweh knew his heart that he would have walked in the commandments. When Yeshua saw Zechariah, 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 and Shah remembers, in the sycamore tree, and he came down, right, and there was a conversation. He said, and if I've defrauded anyone, I will restore fourfold. He's according to the Torah. For his wrong. And then Yeshua said to him, salvation has now come to his home, for he also is the son of Abraham. He had to obey the commandment. It wasn't enough to say, okay, I, I, I repent of my sin. I know I defrauded him, I repent. Repent means to turn away. Now go resolve, fix it, make restitution, what the Torah says, the commandment says. Oh, no, 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 I don't have to do that. No, no, you didn't repent if you don't go fix it. Oh. <laughs> you got to restore it back to the way it was before you did the sin. You have to make it right, fix it, restore it, correct it, resolve it to the best that is possible in the circumstances. That's why his faith, and he chose to believe in Yeshua, his faith was shown by his works because he chose to obey. It requires obedience, right? And the whole book of James is, is about that. Faith without works is what? It's dead faith. So to say, well, I believe in Yeshua or Jesus, but don't walk in obedience is dead faith. There's no sanctification, and therefore, how is one part of the bride, the true bride, if there is no sanctification? Okay, step number six. Gifts given to the bride. So step one is the selection of the bride. Step two is the bride price. Step three is the betrothal, sanctification. Four is the ketubah, the written contract. Five is the consent. And six is the gifts. In Hebrew, that's called matan, the gifts. Okay? Gifts given to the bride. Go back to Genesis 24. And it came to pass, when Abraham's servant heard their words, that he worshipped Yahweh, bowing himself to the earth. Then the servant brought out jewelry of silver and of gold, clothing and gave them to Rebecca. He also gave precious things to her brother and to her mother. That's the baton. That's not the bride price. The bride price was the nose ring. Mm -hmm. and he had the Ten Commandments, right? Ten shekels of the gold prices. But there were things for Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Gifts given to the bride. Mm -hmm. Okay, now regarding Israel. For that, <coughs> we can see it in the Torah, but Paul explains it to us <coughs> in a way that I think is really beautiful. Romans chapter 9, verse 3 to 5. For I wish, for I could wish that I myself were accursed from Messiah, from my brother and my countrymen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption of sons, the, the glory, though that is the Shekhinah, the presence of Yahweh Elohim. The covenants, plural, not one covenant, covenants. There's eight covenants that Yahweh Elohim made, and they're all in the Tanakh. Eight. The giving of the Torah, the service of Elohim, because Israel was to be a nation of priests. And all of the promises that are contained therein. Of whom are the fathers, that's the patriarchs, from whom also, according to the flesh, Messiah came, who is over all the eternally blessed Elohim. Those are all these that are gifts that were given to Israel as part of being the bride. Okay, now, the believer in the renewed covenant. Um, one, two, three, four gifts, and then some other gifts. I'm going to just mention them briefly. One, we have the gift of grace. Romans 5, 12 through 15, talking about the, uh, the gift of grace. I'll just read part of it. Um, for if by one man's offense, that's Adam, many died, much more the grace of Elohim, and the gift by the grace of one man, Yeshua the Messiah, bounded to many. We've also been given the gift of righteousness. Also in Romans 5, starting in verse 17. <laughs> For if by the one man's offense, that's Adam, death reigned through the one, much more, those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Messiah Yeshua. Then the gift of eternal life, Romans 6.23, and I'm sure most of us are familiar with this one. For 
the wages of sin is death. That's eternal death, eternal separation, right? But the gift of Elohim is eternal life from Messiah Yeshua, our master. And then the gift of faith. Even on the faith to believe in him is a gift in and of itself. Which I quoted earlier, Ephesians 2, 89. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. It is the gift of Elohim. And then we've also been given other gifts besides those four. The spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14. Spiritual gifts. But remember, Matai, gift, or gifts, the true bride, the gifts belong to him, they're given to the bride, entrusted unto the bride to serve the master. But we don't seek after the gifts. We seek after the giver. You ever notice how most places they pray to bless the food? But Hebrews bless the giver. We thank him. We don't have to pray over the food per se if it's because it's when his food is already sanctified according to his word. Although we should pray regarding food because there's so much that's GMO and so forth. Alright. There are multitudes who are seeking after things from Elohim, gifts and whatnot. I'm not saying that we shouldn't desire it. Right? But the heart is, we want Him, yeah. not what He has to offer. Because if we get Him, everything that is His, we'll have anyway. Yeah. Right? The bride just wants to behold His face. And too many are being deceived, especially in our days now, to seek after something rather than someone. Yeah. The false prosperity doctrine. They're seeking after something of this world. Yep. And not seeking after the Isaac and Rebecca. Rebecca had it all in those camels. Abraham was very wealthy. She didn't want what Isaac was going to inherit. She wanted Isaac. Right? We have an inheritance which is in heaven. But do we want Yeshua? See, salvation isn't a ticket to get into heaven. It's a relationship with a person, our heavenly bridegroom. That's why it's people are being led astray and deceived because they're thinking it's an event or it's a ticket or it's something to get. It's all about Him. It's all it is. All right, step number seven. It's called the Cup of the Covenant. Now we come back to the Passover. As I started off saying, the Passover is about the wedding. And in the Passover, we have four cups of wine. That relates to four of the things that Yahweh only said he would do for Israel. And now it's just, uh, you see the, pro the prophecy there. Right? Okay. Cup of the Covenant. And David was sharing, he gave the names, and he gave another interpretation of that, which I, I like. The third cup in the Passover, the cup of the covenant, the cup of redemption. Now, we don't see this specifically in Genesis 24, although we do read where the servants stayed, they, they ate, they drank, although Isaac wasn't there, so they weren't actually able to share the cup of the covenant per se, but it's part of the process. So let's talk about Israel. Exodus 24. Then Moses went up also Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw Elohim of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a work of sapphire stone. And it was like the very heavens in its clarity, but on the nobles of the children of Israel he did not lay his hand. So they saw Elohim, and they ate, and they drank. That is, Israel drinking the cup of the covenant with Yahweh Elohim on the mountain. Okay? Kosabrit, cup of the covenant. And then at the Passover, Matthew 26, Luke 22, Yeshua took the cup. The third cup, the cup of the covenant. And he said, Baruch HaKad, Anai, Elohim, Malkalan, Baruch, Kriyat, Agatha. Blessed are you, Yahweh, Elohim. He creates the fruit of the vine. He's the vine, and we're the branches, and the fruit is what he produces through us. Right? And he 
he gave her to all of them. And the bridegroom and the bride would share the cup of wine. And that's just grape juice. And he said, this is my blood of the renewed covenant, which is shed for the many for, many for the remission of sins. And he said he would not drink of the fourth cup until he drinks it with us in his father's kingdom. The marriage supper of the Lamb is a Passover. Do you understand that now? It's a Passover because it's the wedding. Passover starts as a wedding and it ends as a wedding. Yeah. And we're rehearsing the wedding from beginning to end. That's what all the appointed times, the feasts are about. We're rehearsing the wedding. It changes the direction and focus. It makes the purpose of our life. Does it not? Yes. Mm -hmm. For what shall a prophet a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for the life of his soul? It's all about the wedding. Yeah. And nothing else counts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I want to share something from the book of Ruth. The book of Ruth is so incredible because there's, when it's read in Hebrew, there are so many mysteries and so many prophetic things that are, that are being said and being done. I hope to be able to do a teaching on the book of Ruth at some point. Ruth left with her, with Naomi. And Naomi heard that Yahweh Elohim had visited his people and his there was bread once again in Bethlehem, the house of bread, so Naomi decided to return. And the two daughters in law, the two sons had passed, started after her. And Ruth, uh, Naomi told her, told both of them to go back. One turned and went back, the other followed her. Naomi represents the Holy Spirit, the comforter. 